All right, so we experienced some pretty interesting things in LA, especially uh, last video. We saw all kinds of stuff. It was mostly just going around trying to look at stuff and trying to find parking and never finding parking to like get out and actually like look at it. But got to see a bunch of stuff from the street. Uh, someday might come back here and do more exploring. Obviously, there's endless things you can explore here. There are like endless things, you know, to find. But uh, it's just too much people, too much hustle bustle, too fast. I want to get out into nature and uh, decompress a little bit. And I think Evie does too. So that's where we're heading. We're heading to Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, tonight we're going to camp outside of it at BLM land because it doesn't, I need to do more research, but it looked like there's no uh, free camping inside the national park. It's all paid and it's probably all taken. So we're just going to uh, stay at the BLM land outside and then tomorrow go into the park and actually explore. Might be able to go in today if we get some sunlight. Uh, first we got to stop by Planet Fitness and uh, stop somewhere to fill up a water tank. So that is our um, mission for today. Pulling out of the my wide, yeah. Pulling out of the Planet Fitness on Chicago Avenue in Riverside, California. Very clean, very nice. I give that one a big thumbs up. Uh, looks like we're not going to get there until about 4:15, so the sun will be coming down shortly after we get there. Uh, hopefully, we'll have enough to show you what the campground is like. It is BLM land. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. Um, so it's free up to 14 days. I guess it's like the official overflow parking for. Um, for um, Joshua Tree. So yeah, we still got a ton of cleaning up to do in the back of the van. We just still have stuff everywhere. We just gotta take like a day, uh, partially tonight, partially tomorrow to clean stuff up and get everything reorganized, you know, after the uh, high top thing. But we're still super, super psyched about the high top thing. And we still, it's been like two days now or something. We still like walk around all hunched over it's funny it's it's taken a while to get used to it but it's a good uh it's a good thing so yeah got about an hour and a half to go and we're gonna hit up joshua tree so this is the university of california riverside parking lot and all of these uh shade spots for the cars have solar panels on the roofs i thought that was pretty cool and speaking of solar panels we have absolutely no idea how we're going to mount our solar panels on this thing we're thinking about mounting on the very front of the new of the high top but I don't think that's gonna work. I think the panel's too wide and the whole roof has all these crazy curves on it. So I have no idea what we're gonna do. Uh, maybe when we get to Joshua Tree, I'll get out and try to give you guys the best look I can. Uh, it's hard to see the top without a ladder or, um, or something to stand on because it's so tall, but I'll try. This is why this stuff lights on fire so much. They have all these wildfires. Look at how unbelievably dry it is out here. These, these beautiful mountains here are just covered in dead grass. It's so ridiculously flammable. All someone has to do is throw a cigarette butt out. Poof! There goes a wildfire. This is nuts, man. It's beautiful down here though. I always thought, like when I hear about Southern California, I imagine the beach, you know, and like surfing or something. I never think about these beautiful, beautiful mountains that are, surround everything. It's like these beautiful mountains and then the beach. You know what I mean? It's pretty, uh, pretty cool to see in real life. Whoa. Yeah, this huge like shopping center looking thing. It looks like it was brand new. Like they were still building it, burnt down. There's all fire trucks out here. They're still building it. Yeah, they're still building it, huh? Oh, no. Yeah, look at that. It's all charred. All of it. Wow, that sucks, e man. Every single building, but they're not connected. So I'm assuming yeah. somebody set it on fire. It had to have been arson, man. Yeah, because... It had to have been. It's like five separate buildings. They're not connected at all, but they're all were on fire. Yeah, and those are the only things that burned out here. And there's yeah. grass in between. Yeah. There's grass in between all of them that did not burn. Yeah. Crazy. It's probably... That was, a, that was a crime scene, man. It's probably locals that uh, didn't want the shopping center to be there. Could have been. Could have been. That's a trip, man. That really sucks for whoever uh, was building that thing. So we're gonna grab some gas real quick and some soda pops and get back on the road. Only got an hour to go. It's 4:20 right now. No, it's 3:20. It's gonna be 4:20 when we get there. So it's pretty windy out here, and I think the high top actually feels better in the wind than it did without, which is really weird. There's something about the way it's put together that forces the van down. Check out these uh, wind turbines. Look at how fast they're going. They're hauling, man. I've never seen them go that fast. But yeah, there's, I guess it must act like a spoiler or something. It feels like it pushes the whole van down 
which makes it more stable. It doesn't feel like it's it moves around as much when you're on the highway. Maybe it's just the weight. I don't know. Um, what? Because we got it uh, done extra strong, we had them put wood inside of it so it can mount things. It uh -huh. added a lot of weight to it. Yeah. So the high tap on its own, without the wood, it is heavy enough. But with all the wood, I mean, it's half inch plywood across the whole thing, plus two by fours on the sides. Yeah. I think it's just the weight of it just kind of just pushes it down. And you can see it on our tires. Our tires look under now because it's so heavy. Yeah, yeah. It definitely weighs a lot. So yeah, whatever it is, I think it feels more. What do you think? You think it feels more stable on the highway? Yeah, it definitely feels a lot more stable on the highway. Even with the winds. Even with the winds. Because yeah. it's getting pretty gusty out yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, like I can feel the wind hitting the van just like it did before without the high top. But I feel like I have more control now. It's yeah, like, the, I don't have to like hold down to the wheel, and, like you know, like pray for my life. It's like okay, I feel the wind, but I'm not really moving. You know. It like, doesn't move the van yeah. as much. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's an interesting thing. I thought for sure that the high top was gonna make it uh, not very fun to drive, but I think it's better. I mean, except for the city streets. When you go over a speed bump, because the extra weight, the front shocks especially, they're on their way out. They get a little pogo action. You need to bounce around quite a bit, but it's kind of plush at the same time. So I think the, the shocks can wait a little bit, but definitely uh, would be smart to get some heavy duty shocks all the way around and get a uh, sway bar in the back. Because when you go around a corner, the whole body of the thing rolls to the outside. And you know, if you're going fast enough, if you're going on the highway, like 70 miles an hour, and you have to make an emergency turn, your chances of rollover are a lot higher in this than they are in a lot of vehicles. So I don't know, I think it'd be smart to make those upgrades. Look at all these freaking windmills. They just keep going and going and going. They never end. There's gotta be thousands of them. So we got just got into what looks like the town of Joshua Tree. Look at all these freaking Joshua Trees, man. I've never seen so many in one place. I guess you would kind of expect that in a place called Joshua Tree. Uh, looks like this is a city called Joshua Tree, which I didn't know existed. And we just got through Yucca Valley, Yucca Valley. I'm guessing it's probably Yucca. And we are 14 minutes away from our campsite. So we're gonna go hit that up real quick. And um, yeah, do that. All right, so out here there are some houses. Um, this is the where freecampsites.net is telling us to go. You can see it's still kind of like there's there's city streets. Um, I don't know exactly where we're going. It looks like there's a big solar farm out here or something. I don't see any RVs out there. We might be the only ones out there. Is Hopefully it's clear, clearly marked. This might be an issue. What's up? Going straight, I don't know where to go. Yeah, go straight. Okay, so this BLM land we're supposed to be going to is supposed to drive through the solar farm. Um, I don't think it's. I don't think the solar farm was here. Yeah, I don't know. I ever made that post on freecampsites.net. Um, it says we can go straight down this way and go around it, but look how far down it goes. It doesn't end. You want to take? You want to stop for a second? We can look and like think about this before we go down this crazy dirt road. Okay. All right, so we're gonna turn around. We're turning around and gonna find a different way in. I was looking at freecampsites.net and someone said the best way in is through the Sunflower Road, and we took a different road to get in. And we're just uh, our GPS is just going according to the uh, GPS coordinates on freecampsites.net. So hopefully we'll find this place. It looks like that uh, solar farm goes pretty far down. We might not be able to get in. I really wish I would have wired up that LED light bar on the front now. Aha, uh -huh. Sunflower Road it is. We got around the uh, solar farm over here. So it looks like it's all the way down here. It looks like I can see some RVs and vehicles off in the distance down here. So I'm really hoping that's it. It looks like it is according to the map, but we'll see. This road is pretty washboarded and it looks like pretty soft sand too. So I'm cruising through about 15 miles an hour and not stopping for anything until I get on some harder ground. Yeah, it looks like this has got to be it. Look at this road, it's just dirt, go man. Go left? Yeah, that's what your GPS says. Okay, I was thinking go out there, but okay. Okay, it's up to you. Yeah, this ground makes me a little nervous. Oh, it's a lot harder here. Yeah. Look at all these tire tracks, though. Look at how many people have gotten stuck out here. Holy crap. Yeah, according to the GPS, we are here now. Okay. 
Uh, I guess we'll just go straight into this big open area. Man, I hope we don't get stuck out here. Ah! Yeah, look at these tire tracks, man. Hopefully this open area is not just off sand, it's packed. It looks pretty packed right here. Those tire tracks are kind of old. This looks like a playa. It's big and open. Go straight? Yeah, I don't want to be. See all these trucks over here? Yeah. And this looks like a sound of the road at least. Those were when it was wet. Just, you can just park right here. Right here? Just right here. Right here? Yes. Okay. Just, people can go around this. There's a van dollar down there. Let's get out and look. Oh wow, it's cold out here. Yeah, that's pretty hard. I don't think we'll get stuck on this. Look at that high top. Isn't it weird to look at? It is so weird to look at. <laughs> look at that. That's sweet. Okay, so just to clarify how we got here, because it was very confusing on the uh, from Google Maps. We came in from Highway 62 here, took a left on, what's this called, Saf Sunfair, yeah, Sunfair, and then you go down and then went all the way, and then we came down to this road, and this is where, or one of these roads, and that's how we got stuck at the, uh, the solar panel farm. So instead, you just take a left on the Sunfair, just like we did, and go all the way down here to this road, which is Sunflower. See what it says, Sunflower? And then you just follow it all the way out, past the solar farm and we're all the way up in here but it looks like you can park anywhere in this area I mean it's like wasteland campsite yeah BLM dispersed camping anywhere out here it looks like at this time there was a little caravan down here maybe that's someone we would know no I don't think so they're all trailers but yeah this is just a huge huge area in this playa where you can park uh, just a ton of BLM land it's mostly just flat desert land there's like nothing out here there's some hills out in the distance um, I'll, I'll try to go capture the city lights at night right now but I don't think it'll turn out because they're too far away but beautiful views at night uh, it is cold right now but it is December and it's the desert so I wouldn't expect any less now as far as uh, mounting the solar panel I was talking earlier we're gonna have trouble with it so here's our panel it's pretty big you can get kind of see the size to relate to what I'm about to show you we're thinking about mounting it on the front this is obviously the back um, but the front is a very similar shape and size. It's a little bit bigger, I think. Um, but we were thinking about mounting it on the front, on the outside, because it would be kind of easy to clean and we wouldn't have to worry about all these crazy curves up here. The entire top of this thing is curves. And um, we might be able to mount it like here and here. So let me set this camera down and show you real quick. I think I mentioned in the, one of the last videos, this is the 24 inch bubble top. Once you get over like 20 inches or so, uh, you have to get these curves in the roof. It has to like bubble up like that. So we could have gotten a shorter one, but we wanted to be able to fully stand up and have a little bit of room above us to make it feel, you know, big enough to be a home. So that was our, uh, our thinking there. But check this out. Let's see if I can do this without breaking anything. Yeah, you can't even. It's just, the panel is just too big, man. It's just too big. So no matter what, it's gonna stick off the end, off the sides. I mean, unless we go this way, but even if we go this way, we can only mount it all the way up there. It's still, you have to mount it like on the outside. Of course, I'm covering the light. This is really hard to do. There's just no easy way to mount this thing is my point. So if you guys have any suggestions, I think maybe we could get some angle iron or, you know, uh, metal square blocks or something on the inside part on this main bubble in here. That might work. I don't know, man. I don't know what we're going to do. We might just sell this thing and get some like, uh, you know, portable ones, like 200 amp hours of portable ones. So when we're camping, we can use it because we don't need solar when we're in the city because we drive every day when we're in the city and we have the battery isolator and it charges up our battery like that. So it's... I don't know, man. It's just really nice for when we're out camping that we don't have to drive. That's where the solar really comes in for us. 
So anyway, any suggestions are more than welcome. Um, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Love yourself.